Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today I want to talk about how do you manage damage down from the squash bug. Now, it'd be a wonderful world if I could say we can eliminate squash bugs, that we could eliminate pests. And if you want to subscribe and follow me, I'll be showing you how to tend to different diseases and pests and problems in your garden. But today's about squash bugs. So my squash plants, couple of things. You have insect dust. All things are chemicals. You could do organic, Captain Jack's with Spinosad, or you could use the processed chemicals made by people. Seven, you need an insect dust. That dust can kill all insects, good and bad, so you have to use it in a sensible way. I've done videos on that. So at night, I put some dust on the outer leaves. I come back in the morning like now, I wash them off. I also go down to the base of the plant, and I put dust at the base of the plant. I remove flowers that are around there so that I'm not getting the dust into the flowers, so I reduce the harm to pollinators and put it down on the stem. So I come back in the morning, I rinse it down. You don't have to do this every day, but this is a good way to catch any kind of insect that's crawling up and down the stem of your plants. Now, really water it in, because if you're just watering or you're rinsing off the dust, squash bugs hang around the base right down there, and they don't like all this water. So I like to basically saturate the area just like this, and we'll take a look at this at the end of the video. If you have any bugs, and I've been doing this for a while, so there may not be too many. If you have any squash bugs hanging around down there, they will crawl up the stem in a, you know, as little as five minutes, 10 minutes, and then you can just find them sitting on top of your uh, leaves, flowers, stems, and you can just kill them. Killing them is the best way to do it by hand. Look for them. The other thing you have to start to do is look around for orange metallic looking eggs and really inspect the undersides of your leaves. So here's a cluster right here. Let's bring it out to the sun. Those are squash bug eggs. You can put a piece of scotch tape or duct tape right onto here, peel it back, and they will fall off. Or you can just grind them off with your finger. They'll fall to the ground and other insects will eat them. But you are really looking to find, here's another cluster. If you find one, there's going to be more around. You're just looking to remove these clusters and you're going to, you're going to reduce the population of squash bugs. Sometimes they might be on the stems or the top of the leaves. I'm able to water my garden by hand. I live in Maryland, so we get a lot of rain and I don't have to worry about watering every day. But when I am watering by hand, I'm also inspecting for different problems, different pests, different diseases, and that kind of keeps me on track. If we get down into here, rinse off the dust on the stem, and again, soak that area. And we'll wait for some squash bugs to come. So that is my yellow, might be a crook neck squash. This is a scallop squash. This holds true for acorn squash and butter squash. Let's walk over there, see if we can find some more eggs and find some of the squash bugs. This is my butternut squash. Now these vine more, so they're gonna be climbing everywhere, but the squash bugs are still gonna come in from the bottom. They tend not to bother the vining crops as much, but they are a problem. And the same thing is just rinse off the dust. There's no flowers down there, so that's fine. But really soak in the area. The base definitely just around the plant and you will have squash bugs that are gonna crawl up. My acorn squash is over here. Similar process. Just get in, rinse the stem down and soak the area. Now, if you don't want to use the chemical dusts, organic, non-organic, they both kill good insects. I understand that. And you would just want to come out and maybe do this process more of wetting down the area and then coming back in five minutes, 10 minutes and looking for the squash bugs. You also want to inspect the leaves. The leaves to these plants tend to get less eggs. They really love squash plants and zucchini plants and not so much your winter squash. So I will kind of look through all of these. But that's the basic setup. So let's wait, you know, that amount of time and see if we find any of the uh, squash bugs. 
So here we are at the butternut squash and it's been just a couple of minutes and there is one of the squash bugs coming up to the top. So I just grab them, uh, don't want to lose it. And I just crush it and throw it into the ground. Now you can throw it into a bucket of soapy water or whatever you want to do, but that's what's going to start happening to all the different squash. Um, where we really soak the area is you're going to see the squash bugs come up and if you kill off the adults you greatly reduce the egg laying you know and then you reduce eggs you reduce the babies coming out that are going to try and feed everywhere so that's the whole kind of principle is to reduce the population of the squash bugs by killing off the adults removing the eggs and then they just don't damage your plants enough so you get a really nice harvest okay let's look in a few more areas now this method of soak and destroy works really well when the plants are smaller. As they get bigger, they can hide. I can see one has moved up a leaf straight back there. We're going to walk over to that. So you do have to look around. I don't like to overcrowd my squash plants because I can get in and really inspect everything. And also look from different angles. So let's see if we can find that one. There it is. It's right. Uh, it just dropped to the ground. There we go. Kind of gross, but there it is. And we're going to just crush that one and get rid of it. You also want to get rid of weeds that are growing under there. That's a place for them to hide. I put down mulch. People worry that gives them a home. It doesn't. They're going to be around with or without the mulch. And we just kind of look around and see what we can find. I don't see any more of the eggs. So I've been doing this regularly since the beginning of June. So I am really reducing the population of the squash bugs. I want to find one more. I haven't found any more squash bugs yet. But another strategy is to replace your plants. So this guy's doing pretty nicely. There's yellow squash growing down there. Not right now, but maybe in two, three weeks after this plant's been producing, maybe the pest could be squash bugs, other problems, disease come and harm this plant so much that it's damaged you can't use it. Instead of trying to keep this plant alive, start some backup plants in about two or three weeks from this size. And then you just pull the dying plant out, you put in some new squash, and you continue your harvest. So that's really the goal. It's about really maximizing what you can get out of the garden. So reduce the pests, have backup plants, and just plant throughout the summer and you're going to get a continuous harvest. I did find some more eggs right there. So they're alive and around and they always come to my area. Starting in the end of May, all the way through June. They just never seem to leave actually. And you just want to manage down the problems. Here's some more over here. That might be a different insect. Oh, and look, moving around, there's another squash bug right there. And that's what you want to do. I know it kind of gross, you, you crush them, but it works. Inspect your plants, find the eggs, find the squash bugs, soak the base, come back in about five minutes, you'll find the adult squash bugs, kill them off. Thanks so much for watching, please subscribe. I'll be doing a whole series on managing pests and disease and how you can take care of the problems, at least manage down the damage. Thanks for watching.